I might actually win. First time, 3-6. I think it's 10, best of 10. Wow, the ball's going fast now. But it's nothing because I have this accelerometer mouse. Yeah, 3-8. I, I can sense it. I am going to win. And we're going to call this one like um, Excel accelerometer mouse. Or Excel mouse. How about that? Excel mouse. And remember, we have to go into extensions. This is we're starting over and we're going to add in mouse. There we go. And we're going to take advantage of the accelerometer. So um, if you haven't already, go into the keyboard lesson where we use the accelerometer to do some keyboard input and we look at that signal. I'm not going to dive as deeply into the accelerometer signal here. Instead, we're just going to start to use it. Um, so in order to do this, though, I need to use the map function because, well, we can graph. Well, let's at least graph, I guess, the x and y because that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the accelerometers x and y to translate that into mouse x and y as well. So let, let's start there at least. So console log, and then we're going to go to input and acceleration. And we're going to change that. I'm going to make sure you can see this. So that's the Y. So now we're just printing just, just, to, just to look at the signal. And again, we can move this. And I'm using the simulator. So as I move the mouse on the simulator, it's actually changing the values. So as I go left, X is graphed in, in blue. If I go all the way to the left and tilt left, then the value goes to negative 1,023. If I tilt all the way to the right, positive 1,023. So we know that that's the range. And similarly for the Y, if I go all the way down, negative 1,023, all the way tilted that way, then it's uh, 1,023. Okay, so we have to translate that though into mouse input. And for this, I wanna use the mapping function. So let's go back here and processing and it's really really common to want to translate from one range like we have negative 1023 and 1023 to another range which is the range we, we want for our mouse um, and the the way that processing and, and lots of other programming frameworks do it do it is through this map function which is going to map one range to another range so what does this do exactly and i want to go back to this and just talk about it for a second. So let's dive into this mapping function. As I said, it's really common in programming. We need to map one range to another range. So for example, accelerometer input to mouse output. So let's imagine that the accelerometer, the X value for the accelerometer, that's our input range. Let's imagine that it went from zero to a thousand or a hundred. Now we also have this output range that's different from this. Um, and we could just call this output range for now. And let's imagine this goes from zero to 10. If you take a value, let's say the accelerometer value is right in the middle, so it's 50. And we want to map that to the new range. Well, what value do we, would we get? Well, it's pretty straightforward because of the way in which we selected these scales. But if we're halfway in our input range, we should be halfway in our output range. And so we should be at 5. Similarly, let's say we have another input that's at 75 for our accelerometer, then our output should be 75. We're remapping this value scale into another value scale. And you might just look at this because we have our minimum value here in both of the ranges is zero. It's actually pretty straightforward math. The only thing we're doing is we're taking the input value, we're dividing it by the range, input range, 
and we're then multiplying it by the output range. So for example, 50 over 100 would be our input. When we have 50 as our input value, our range is 100 and our output range is 10. So this would be five. Similarly, if we had 75 over 100 times 10 equals 7.5 and so on. Now, actually the scales are different and that's why it's nice to have a mapping function where we're not just doing some simple division. It's still a pretty simple function, the mapping function, but we have, we go from zero, from negative 1,023. This is our input range to 1,023. And we want to remap that into some, so that's our accelerate, acceleration on the X. And we're going to say mouse X. We'll remap that to something like 20 pixels to the left or 20 pixels to the right. So we're going to remap that to negative 20, 20. Okay. If that fully doesn't make sense, that's okay. Um, we can still use it to program and that's what we're going to do now. Okay. So what we want to do is map the acceleration on the X axis to, um, output on, um, into like X movement pixels. So let's do that. Uh, let's see, we can make this really simply. Um, I want to use mouse again, mouse move. I'm going to use this map. So, and then we're going to use the accelerometer is the value. The acceleration on the X is also going to control the um, X movement for your mouse. We know that that goes from negative 1,023 because we graphed it to 1,023. And now it's really up to us what we want to map that into in terms of pixel movement. But as I said before, we'll try negative 20 to 20, and then maybe we'll play with that range a little bit. The larger the range, uh, the more movement we're going to get out of the mouse, the, the larger this output range. Okay, and then we can copy and paste this because we want to do the same thing but for the, for the Y. And that's it. I mean, this is like the longest block that we've ever had, but it's not too complicated if you start to understand what this X is. One other thing I noticed is that it's helpful to be able to turn this on and off. So um, let's just have this if switch right. We've done this before. It's just easy to turn on and off the mouse then if switch right. And then to help the user understand what state they're in, I'm going to start to show the, the rainbow. So if we're actually using the CPX as a mouse, let's sh show a rainbow. Otherwise, let's show, I don't know, uh, this, this wiping animation. And then, of course, we need to have our mouse clicks. So let's do on button A down. Give some feedback. We'll do mouse button left, mouse button down. Turn this black and then mouse up, button A up, button A up, left button up. Okay, we press the button down, turns red, Mouse button left, exactly. So this is only going to show up for a second though, because we're in this forever loop here. So we'll only see red flash for a second. So this, this black part won't matter. Um, so we'll probably just take that off. Okay, should we test it? Let's do it. So we're not yet using this as a mouse, so we can move it around. We know that because we have this like little blue animation, which is what we coded in, right? We coded in the blue animation if the switch is to the left. But if we move as soon as we move the switch to the right, then we'll be able to use 
the CPX as a mouse. So let's do that, moving the switch to the right and look at that. And then we have the A button to change the color and we can make beautiful pictures together. Whoa, very cool. Um, we can also do this up oh, and I'm going to move the switch to the left so I can get control back of my own mouse and do free pong. So let's play this. And as I remember, this does not work in small screen. It only works really in full screen. So we've got to go over here and I'm going to now select the mouse easy. And I'm going to switch this switch this on. Okay. Not so easy, actually. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so close. Hmm. All right. I got one. So if we want to make this more sensitive, we should move it more than 20 pixels. So, um, Maybe we should do that really quickly. Right, so we're mapping this. Okay, let's pause. Or it'll just, there we go. Um, we've got this enormous range of negative 1,023. Negative 1,023 to 1,023, and we're squishing that down into this small range of negative 20 to 20. So we could make that slightly larger. Let's do negative 50 to 50, negative 50 to 50. And essentially this will have an amplification effect. So the cool thing is as you're tilting it more, you're going to get greater speed in that direction. So if I'm tilting it left and I'm really tilting it left, I'll get greater speed because it'll get much closer to negative 50. If I'm tilting it right, and on a severe tilt to the right, it'll get much closer to, to positive 50, so the, the mouse will move faster. So let's try this. We're going to download it. And that's what I mean by kind of playing around with the sensitivities. I moved the switch on the board back over to the left. And now I have it to the right. Yeah, and it's, so it's like way more sensitive now. Look at it, it's gonna be faster. Does that mean I'm gonna be better or worse at this? Let's try it out. All right, already got one against me. Okay. So maybe I'm actually worse with greater sensitivity, but you'd think I'd be better. You know what I should do? This game is only using the Y axis, so I shouldn't even have the X. And I think then I would be even better. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it now, this sensitivity. But see, as I dip it down, see, I can go really fast. So you have, you have that control. And this plays way better than the keyboard version, because again, we have this kind of continuous signal. I just can't even see. I was just trying to show. I was trying to show. I can just show my side. Let's see. I know what to do. I'm going to go like this, 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 this. There we go. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into OBS. There we go. There we go. So now you can see me actually play it. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, where's my mouse? The mouse got lost. There we go. I'm going to change this. I'm going to take out the x-axis movement, if you're still with me, which is amazing if you are. I'm going to take out the x-axis movement because we don't need that in this game and it's making it hard to play. So this is what I, you know, this is incredible. Like I'm just making a very custom controller for one application. Um, and that's the power of, you know, programming and prototyping. I was like, well, let's make a custom paddle for this Pong game. All right, now I think there, ah, I screwed up and I, I changed. I removed the Y, but I want to keep the Y. I want to remove the X. So there, I just, I just hit control Z for undo. And we'll we'll do that again. You're still with me. That's amazing. All right. Let's program it. Yeah. Now that the mouse, because the mouse cursor was falling off the screen and then I didn't have focus anymore on that window. So that's kind of what was happening. So now it's all about how good am I at this game against the computer. Come on now. Oh. Yeah, three, four. Ah, three, five. Boom. Boom. No. Okay. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. I smell it. Yeah. See, because I can go super fast because I got my mapping functions working. Boom. Thank you very much. Finally, I win. And it's all due to the CPX and our mapping functions and our ability to go up to 50 pixels in speed. Um, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see what you make with the CPX as a mouse.